From the Time Center in New York City, City University Television, in association with the New York Times, presents a Times Talk series with editors and writers of the New York Times. Today's presentation, Phineas and Ferb, Times interviewer, Brooks Barnes. Hello, Phineas and Ferb fans. <laughs> I'm Lorraine Costuzipak with the New York Times, and I am so thrilled to bring you the stars of the hit Disney Channel show, Phineas and Ferb, both here on our stage and live around the world for their fans on the web. It's no wonder that Phineas and Ferb, with its clever animation, funny storylines, and catchy music, is Disney's number one animated hit show for kids. It's seen in 170 countries in 34 different languages and it attracts major movie stars in guest appearances. You'll meet the show's creators and actors in just a minute, but first, we want to let you know that Ashley Tisdale is unable to attend today's event. However, we are thrilled that Malik Pancholi, the voice of Baljeet, will be joining us. Interviewing them today is New York Times reporter Brooks Barnes, who covers the entertainment industry from California for the paper and nytimes.com. He writes about everything from movie studios to theaters and the broader business of Hollywood. And now, without further delay, please join me in welcoming New York Times reporter Brooks Barnes and our very special guests, Phineas and Ferb actors, Vincent Martella, Malik Pancholi, Allison Stoner, Dee Bradley Baker, and executive producers Swampy Marsh and Dan Povenmire. Perry shirt. The Perry shirt. Thank you. Um, raise your hand if this is your first Times talk. Um, good, because that's <laughs> me too. So um, <laughs> it could be complete chaos. And if it's quiet, uh, you'll do the cricket chirping sound. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so uh, I know everyone knows that the show is a great big hit, but I didn't know, and I'm responsible for knowing since I cover the company. Um, just how big of a hit it is. And so I was going to sort of just mention a couple of uh, stats here. Um, number of video games sold, 1.5 million. Two million t-shirts. We've got Phineas and for macaroni and cheese. <laughs> um, and mouthwash. That's my, that's my proudest moment, Whose idea was I have to tell you that. <laughs> Whose idea was the mouthwash? I'm not sure that was a good idea. I don't know, but, but I have a picture of my daughter holding it up in a, in a Ralph's food store. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Wow. It's like, Daddy, look, look, <laughs> mouth No, we buy it, all that stuff, and we get geeky to the cashier. <laughs> I'm looking in. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Is Sad. that platypus-flavored mouthwash? Is that what, what does it taste like? <laughs> it, yeah, it tastes I, like platypus. I don't know what right. platypus <laughs> tastes like. <laughs> but no actual platypuses are used. It's, it's artificial platypus. Artificial, okay, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> there, you know, there are... Uh, Phineas and Ferb attractions at Disney World and Disneyland coming. Uh, we've got a new book and, and new, uh, a new movie. So, but I think every, I, I want to know um, what, you know, how your dark and dangerous minds came up with all of this to begin with. It had something to do with your childhood? Well, uh, <laughs> actually, uh, uh, a couple of years before we sold the show at a garage sale in Burbank, we found a random idea generator that was broken. <laughs> Dan and I bought it for about $16. We haggled and uh, repaired it. and Soldering and it wire. And produced uh, the Phineas and Ferb show. Yeah. Just that simple. <laughs> that, that's where we are. <laughs> no, uh, Sw Swampy and I were working on a show uh, on another network called uh, Rocco's Modern Life uh, many years ago. And, uh, and we had been thrown together as a writing team, and we just enjoyed writing together so much. We said, you know, we Where we wrote our first song. Yeah, and, 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 and we felt like, you know, we were a little naive and felt like, okay, well, we'll, we'll just create a show together, and we'll sell it immediately, and we'll be able to write toge together for the rest of our careers, and then it took 14 years uh, to, <laughs> to do that. Now, uh, didn't... It seemed so simple when we first spoke about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't you draw the, the uh, Phineas on a napkin or it something? Wasn't a, it wasn't a napkin, actually. It was, it was a... It was, you know, you go to restaurants, and they put butcher paper down right. instead of a tablecloth, and they give you a little can of crayon, to doodle while you're while you're. Uh, They're normally for, for children. They're normally for children. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I was 
of just like sort of just drawing triangles, and I was like, I wonder if I can make a face out of a triangle. I'd never seen a character who was sort of based on a triangle. And so I put the eyes up here, and, and well, here, I'll show you right here, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so I was, uh, I'll use my glasses. Don't, don't encourage him. Really. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't encourage him. So I, you know, I, I, was, I just had like a basic tri uh, triangle shape, and I, and I put an eye there, which gave me another eye there. And I was like, okay, well, that makes that, that the nose. So I'll just put some hair back here, and a little ear here, and okay. Ooh, I like this guy. And, I, and, and, I, and so I had this drawing. I drew him like three times on the, uh, on the napkin. Uh, and. Uh, and tore it out and brought it home, and I drew, the re drew Ferb and Doofenshmirtz and Perry that night and brought them into work the next day, and we, we sort of based the whole show around those guys. So you start with the characters and then come up with the stories around Yeah, them. well, you know, it, we'd, we'd sort of had an idea of the type of show we wanted to make, but we didn't really have characters to, to, to hang it on yet. And we, we, I mean, it started because we, we were having that conversation as all kind of approaching middle-aged guys do about, you know, kids today, they don't get out and do stuff or whatever it is. <laughs> it was our, our version of kids were sitting inside watching TV and playing video games and they should be out doing stuff. And that was what we remembered from our youth was we both had parents who were like, go ahead, put on a play. You can use the garage. We'll get you, you know, we'll sell you a curtain in costumes or, you know, build anything you want. Here are the tools. And we loved doing that. And that was kind of the kernel of, of Phineas and Ferb is kids that got out and did stuff every day. So now kids sit at home all summer watching Phineas and Ferb <laughs> <laughs> playing the video games of Phineas we and Ferb. We have become oh, that's sure. what we hate. It backfired, but, <laughs> but the idea was <laughs> very genuine. And no, we actually, we actually hear from parents all the time saying that they, they, yeah. they love their kids to watch Phineas and Ferb because yeah. then After they go out and do stuff. You know, like it encourages them to go and be creative and build so and if, create. If you're another television show, we're not a good lead-in. <laughs> as soon as they're yes. done, they're out in the back building the stuff, playing hey, with tools. So. Vincent, how, how did you uh, get your part? Tell, the, tell us about the audition. Well, I actually auditioned uh, uh, quite a while before I actually heard back on, on um, playing the role of Phineas. And um, I did this voice when I went into the audition. I'm not exactly why this voice is what came to mind, but um, I just heard he was very energetic. <laughs> and very you fun. all should answer it in your voice. <laughs> and uh, setting the bar <laughs> very high. I, I, I kind of did that. And, oh, yeah. uh, and actually, I believe it was Dan who saw me on, a, on another show I was working with. Dan Swampy Bull saw me on a, a show called Everybody Hates Chris that I was working on at the time. And um, you can <laughs> applaud for everybody. Thank you. And, uh, and so they, they wanted me to come in and, and read and, and try out on the pilot. And I uh, did the Phineas voice you all hopefully know and love. And um, they really enjoyed it. And so I was able to, uh, to do the pilot. And it was a lot of fun. It was really the, cool. The you thing know, that, that made his voice work is because we, we tried a lot of people. Um, it's very difficult, it's a very fine line for Phineas between being kind of irritatingly precocious and obnoxious and almost sarcastic with the lines we give him. He, he's, you know, a very sharp kid. Right. And the way Vincent did it, there was almost no line we gave him that didn't just sound genuine and happy and supportive. Yeah. Didn't cross the line into me. Never yeah, crossed yeah. the line. And we wanted him to great. sound smart, but a, but a lot of times when we'd, 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 we'd tell actors that, we would get something that would sound sort of like... Smart Alec. Like, either that or super nerdy, like like Eddie Deason in, in Greece, you know, it, like like a, 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 some caricature. Yeah, we kids love the Greek parents. <laughs> so, uh, Back in the old days. Yes. <laughs> but, Back in the and, shy. And we wanted him to be cool, but not but not sound like you know you know like it was hard to get somebody who could really not be not be trying like overtly cool and not be nerdy and sort of just be really genuine in the middle and and it's like as soon as we heard Vincent with the with the pictures we were like okay that's ah oh, that's our guy but how did what made you do that voice well i had been playing around with a few different things and uh, when i originally auditioned i got two paragraphs of dialogue from the pilot which is the roller coaster episode i hope you all have seen that it's a very great episode <laughs> and uh, and basically, the, the speeches I was given, the monologues I was given were, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's that whole speech that Phineas gives to uh, his crowd of friends when he's presenting the roller coaster. And what I was told was uh, he just needs to, to be very nice, very smart, very energetic, and very fun. And, and I just didn't see my normal voice playing that. I, I wanted something very unique to Phineas. And I hoped that that voice had worked out, and luckily they saw they saw eye to eye with me on that, and I was really able to uh, to fall into uh, you know a voice that was very comfortable to sing in because there's a lot of singing on the show, and it was just uh, 
it became very comfortable for me and uh, and I think really stuck with the character. So yeah. I got lucky, yeah. Yeah. Dee, you have uh, settled into the greatest gig I can imagine for a, a voice, <laughs> elevated voice actor. Yeah, it's called Reprint. <laughs> it's, <laughs> they, it's one that has no lines. <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah, where we record, we recorded the sound, the Perry sound, just one time, and it's it, it's kind of like the Roadrunner. They just reprint it every single show. Uh, which is just like checks just come in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly true, though, is it? <laughs> it's not exactly true. We do have him, you know, like do struggle noises and There's stuff like that. There's times when we will have him to come in, but the but vast majority of the time you hear it's, like, it's I'm doing my noise. oven while I work. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a reference for yeah. the parents there. Yeah. Uh, have you ever thought what Perry would sound like if he did talk? Uh, ha. Uh, let's see. We haven't. We, we haven't tried that, no. have we? No, we had we, we did a fake out once where we, we thought he was talking and then he was actually lip syncing to a, oh. to a, a book on tape. And we had Tim <laughs> Curry's voice. That was Tim Curry's voice. voice. <laughs> Very dark and, yeah. and uh, British. I haven't considered that, no. Okay, it, well, you chirp. It'd be right. fun to try. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's so incredible. How did you come up with that? Uh, well, it's a, it's a creature that I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure that platypuses actually make they don't. Sounds whatsoever. They don't. You researched <laughs> it, you know, like. Yes. And, uh, and, and so I, I knew it, it's probably not, it's gotta be kind of a quiet sound. Uh, so it's probably not the inhale, because inhale voices, I do a lot of creature sounds, uh, like uh, Avatar Last Airbender, uh, I'm, I do all the creatures on that, and it's, it's kind of a thing that I do. Um, but a lot of the inhale, <laughs> all that stuff, is, that's, that's too loud for a platypus, so it's probably going to be an exhale, and it's smaller and, 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 yes. and not monstrous, <laughs> but it's because it's underwater, right? It's, it's, they like the water. <laughs> There, that, that there sounds about right. So, so we just kind of uh, <laughs> messed around with it a little bit, tried it a few ways, and they said, yep, that's it. And uh, then there it is. I want to be inside your head just for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to be there, there, man. <laughs> There's a lot of times we get the take we want when we're at the studio, but you let him go for five minutes because it's just nice to watch him right. do that. <laughs> you think this is really cool. It's grotesque. <laughs> I've noticed them like when Malik and Allison and Vincent come in, they're never grabbing their face. <laughs> never <laughs> one of <laughs> their roles. You gotta grab their face. I find that sort of thing interesting, which is why I'm alone a lot. <laughs> Anatomically, does that? It's all anatomically correct. Yes. No, are, you, are you tapping into a different resonator or something? Yeah, it, it's changing. By using your hands. It's sorry. changing the column of air and, and where it ends up resonating, and that changes the, the 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 tone of the sound that comes out. So yeah, it is. Okay. See, that's just yeah. one of those huh. things. I wonder how he figured that out. Was he, you know? <laughs> He was Thank making God some noise did. and touched different parts of it's, his face. It's yeah. daddy's alone time. Is what <laughs> it's, like. it's almost like you're doing the Vulcan mind meld with yourself. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's really bizarre. <laughs> now, Malik, well, your voice is really high. Yeah, it doesn't, do you, it doesn't do you do sound that? like me at all. So uh, how do I do it? Yeah. I just, I hold on for dear life. <laughs> and uh, it's, you know, it's like, Buford, stop giving me a wedgie. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> um, <laughs> it takes a lot out of me. It takes a lot out of me. Um, I, remember, I remember auditioning for the show, and I think, I think Dan and Swampy, I was on a show called Weeds, which is also not for this demographic, really. <laughs> <laughs> And I think Dan or Swampy had seen my work on that, and they brought me in to audition for it. And all they told me was that all, all I knew is that he's, you know, from India, and that he's like seven years old. So you know, I kind of went in with like, you know, he has an accent, and maybe he speaks a little high. And and Swampy, I was on the phone with Swampy because I live in New York, and so we did like a phone session. And Swampy was like, "Can you make it higher? Can you make it higher?" And before the end of the, you know, the day, I'd lost my voice completely. <laughs> <laughs> but. But we found this voice that we were going to use for Baljeet. And then, and then they actually, I think they tested it, right? Like, with an Indian audience to, like, for a gay <laughs> sure accent. I don't no. know. I'm sure Disney did some testing. I think they did some stuff. We with don't it. talk anyway. about that at No, Disney. the first thing I did, I, the, the real Baljeet lives in England. Right. I so sent him a clip. It's like, right, well, dude. That was it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's how we came up with the voice. And the fun thing is, after that, we got him all the way up that high. It was a few episodes later. We go, so, you'll be singing. <laughs> a big rock number in that voice, and you can right. hear the, 
the yes, other end. The he's going, Malik going, what? Singing? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, ah. <laughs> exactly. Well, this is, might be a good time to talk about the songs. How, like, you guys write a, an original song for every episode? For we, every 11 minutes. So there's usually two per, per right, half okay. hour. And how do you do that? So, uh, you know. I have <laughs> no idea. I was, I, it takes us about an hour to write a song about anything in, in <laughs> any style. If, if it's just me and Swampy or me and Swampy and one of our writers, Martin Olson, mm -hmm. Uh, who wrote, we wrote most of the first season uh, songs in about an hour. If we if we bring other writers in, it's it it's sometimes more fun and we get different kinds of uh, of songs. But then it takes three hours. It's one of those uh. things that that you know the more cooks you add, the more complicated it gets. You have to spend more time saying, "Oh, that's a stupid idea." Yeah. Whose so idea was squirrels do in my pants? Uh, well, the squirrels in my pants was apropos Does to everyone the. Know what uh, that is? That one you guys have heard squirrels in my pants, right? That one wrote itself. Yeah. <laughs> the scene was written, and we just thought, we'll write this. And, and to be quite honest, what we did was, <laughs> was go to the rhyming dictionary and just wrote a line for everything that rhymed with pants. We, yeah, it was literally, we opened up the rhyming dictionary online and, and, and said, uh, uh, let's see, what do we got? We got France, we got government grants, we got, you know, <laughs> I would love to write a rap song with government grants My in favorite it. Let's line. try to back engineer <laughs> that. My favorite line is, I have a aunt. Aunt Florence, Florence, Florence living in, in France. France. Yes. You can't see the squirrels in my pants. Yes. We were, the, it's a great story after that. The, the very next show we were pitching, we, we had a song in there, and we were going through the note session, and somebody said, you know the song in this one? Eh, it's okay, but it's not. We were thinking we could get something more clever, clever like, um, like squirrels in my pants. And Dan and I thought, <laughs> I would find a million and one ways to describe the song Squirrels in My Pants. And clever. clever would never be one <laughs> of them. <laughs> be, it was the it stupidest not. thing we did. It's a great yes. song, don't get yes. me wrong, but nothing clever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's squirrels in my pants. And, and th that was the one that we felt like, OK, this, this song is so definitely tied to the show. There's no way you could have a life outside the show, because it's specifically about someone with squirrels in their pants. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it, there's no way anybody else is going to ever license this. It doesn't come up a lot. And then the NBA used it for dunking montages in, in for, for the, for the different, different shows. Like, that guy's got some serious squirrels in his pants. Like, <laughs> and, and when they told me that, I was, I was like, really? Squirrels in my pants? I was like, yeah, they're going to use it like as a euphemism and, uh, for, for jumping high and I was like okay and then I was listening to the I was thinking about the lyrics and it's like step on over and watch me put it down and it was like oh that sort of works <laughs> I, I was, uh, that's a good idea after all who are we to argue with the NBA yeah, so. and Disney <laughs> yes <laughs> Allison hi uh, what you doing <laughs> <laughs> Wow, they clap for you. I hope you clap for me when I do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you came, helped come up with that tagline? You know, I think when we auditioned, I was much younger, and my voice is probably naturally higher pitched. And the, the cool thing is, is it's actually, the character's named after your daughter. My daughter, yeah. Who's now five? Five. Oh my goodness, and she was just, was she born when the show? She was born <laughs> when the, uh, she was born after we came up with that character. But okay. I knew that I was having a daughter, and her name was going to be Isabella. And Isabella I guess I, I think I just used my voice, maybe yeah. a little bit higher. Allison is the only person. Uh, she was like the second or third person that auditioned for for Isabella, out of fifty or sixty in one day. Mm. And we knew the moment she op opened her mouth when when, when she when she said, say say what you're doing for them. Hey, Phineas. What you do it? <laughs> I I heard that, and, and Swampy was still in the UK at the time, and I was I was there with the uh, uh, with one of the executives, and we just turned to each other and went, "Oh, that's Isabella." And, we were <laughs> like, uh, and, and part of me was like, "Wow, if she's that good, I can't wait to hear everybody else," you know. And there was nobody else that even made us blink uh, about, about it. It was like, it was literally she just nailed it. <laughs> I got no input on that at all. Yeah. Great. <laughs> how, I'm curious about how you guys work. Just how, t do you work together? Or do you do your voices separately? We refuse to work together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> D and I can't be in the same room too Contraction. long. Contraction. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. tense. Very yeah. tense. Yeah. A lot of waivers were signed just for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
So you know each other, right? Touching his face and making him make noises, and it's <laughs> yeah. yeah Dean's like, let me show you. It'll do it better. Was an like, Don't touch me. He's like, all personal space, <laughs> Dean. Personal <laughs> space. Boundaries. <laughs> Boundaries. He's trying to help. Yeah. No, well, most most of us actually record from separate locations. I know I I generally recorded most of the the series from Florida near Orlando, and Allison, I'm pretty sure, records mostly from LA, right? Yeah, mostly, but you know, I've been in Arizona, New York. I was actually on a, a tour last year, so we would find spot studios if we needed to record the episodes. So they kind of work around what, uh, the other projects that you've got mm -hmm. going. Which yeah. is really great. She's in the middle of the country somewhere and you know, using the recording studio at a small community college. <laughs> and you're, right. you're on the phone with an engineer who's just so excited. Right. <laughs> yeah. Allison Stoner's in my studio. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and they can barely operate the buttons. You can tell it's the best day ever for them. Yeah. <laughs> This is we actually this is actually the first time I've I've, I've never met, met you. you. I think I've met D once. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, Malik uh, we actually met, like, lives on here. A, he on records from here. Yeah. Sure, because the thirty rock. Yeah, we, we yeah, spoke right. one time on the phone, Malik and I, uh, while I was going in to record, and he was on uh, through ISDN, which is like a phone line, and uh, and he was recording, and I said hello to him. It actually took me uh, two years to meet uh, Thomas Sanks, who plays Ferb. So yeah. wow, okay. So I just went out to lunch with him uh, about two weeks ago with Dan, and that was the second time I had met him. <laughs> yeah. Five and a half years of him playing my stepbrother. Yeah. I hadn't realized when you and, and Bobby hadn't met, Buford and Baljeet hadn't yeah. met before. And they were at a recording studio, and I was like, oh, you guys met? Oh, no, you haven't? And they're like, hey, it's good to meet you. I was taking pictures. I didn't realize they'd never been together. But it's a testimony, I think, to how well written the show is and how well directed it is, if I can uh, suck up. Right now, perfect. You can. Uh, Go ahead. Might get some lines. If that that it, it all blends together beautifully, and you would never know that because there are a lot of a lot of shows in animation. You've got the entire cast there, and you all perform it straight through together. Uh, but you can do it all separately, and if you've got the the right directing and and, and actors and script, it, it all fits together beautifully, just like a, a seamless uh, play. Yeah. Applause. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> We made the decision to do it separately because a lot of shows do r record as an ensemble, but but most of it it's it's either Phineas and Ferb is not talking, mm -hmm. or or uh, or uh, or or Doofenshmirtz and Perry's not he doesn't hold yeah. up his side of the conversation. I'm not going to oh. wait up for three hours just to go, <laughs> you know. Yes, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So you know, like those are the the main dialogue parts are all so, sort of mo monologues. The so. most time we we've actually ever recorded people together, or the most frequently is I'll read lines with Carl for monogram. Because he'll come in and I'll like, if I'm gonna do my recording that day, let's hold it so we can get in the booth together. And it's really cool to sit there and do, do that. monogram. Morning Agent PV, we're Dr. Doofenshmirtz it. Carl, where are my trousers? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to do it with him, so we have a blast. But that's kind of one of the rare times we get people in the booth. When we did the pilot, we had Ashley and Caroline Ray, and the, uh, in, uh, th those were the only ones we did together because they had a long dialogue scene to, uh, to, uh, together. But uh, one of the other unusual bits about the show is that you, at least for Disney, is that you start with the drawings first, right? Yes. And not like, can you show us like how you might? Uh, uh, come oh, up with <laughs> uh, uh, Go ahead. draw some pretty well, clouds I mean, this time. I like I mean, pretty clouds. <laughs> well. You know, I, I, I can I can do some drawings. What we do is we is we write the show while we're drawing it because that that way we get to to keep it very visual, and and we want it to sort of be a be a cartoon. We, we we're we're very very um, specific about dialogue, and we beat the dialogue to get to death during the process to make make sure that it's the right syntax to be. Also, funny. as he said earlier, but we've got one character, Ferb, who only has one line an episode, and Perry, who only says. Yes. <laughs> so it's hard to write that out in a script form. Yeah. <laughs> but especially characters like like Ferb, because he this is this is his entire um, expression sheet. <laughs> <laughs> we literally just Xerox th this off, and we put angry, sad, happy, <laughs> elated. It's, it's, it, it's all that way. But because of that, we 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 do a lot of stuff with with. Uh, with him to sort of keep him alive, and and you know I always say, say it's it's Ferb talking when uh, when uh, l l like when Phineas says, "Hey, what's the red button do?" You know, you 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 have have Ferb with the remote, and he goes, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and that's just like three drawings of, of, of that. Right. But it, but what that means is, hmm, I don't know. You try. You know, it's uh, we, we we do that a lot with it. The uh, 
but there's a, there's a lot of things we, you know we draw in a, in a storyboard which is which is three 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 panels like this and you and you say okay here's here's the first one is the house you know uh, it, uh, it, it'll hopefully be drawn a little bit better than that <laughs> and then you know th then then you'll be in the tree <laughs> in the backyard and Phineas and Ferb are, are, are sitting underneath the tree and they're talking and then you, then you cut into a close shot of Phineas saying, hey, Ferb, you know, I, 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 know, I know what we're going to uh, do today. and Do a Times Talk panel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, you know, Fer, Ferb looking back at him. So, so you, you, you do it across this way, and, the, and there's three panels per page. One uh, episode's about somewhere between this thick and sometimes this thick, depending on how many poses, uh, poses we huh. do for it. And, uh, but because we're doing it visual, uh, visually, we come up with a lot of jokes that we would not otherwise come up with because you're, lo you're looking at how, uh, how the, the characters are rela relating to each other spatially, where there's a place we could put something in the background that would be funny. Th there's, there's a lot of stuff that comes from just drawing it as you're writing it. It gives you a chance to realize how much stuff you don't actually have to say. Right. Yeah. Because it's you know it's it's the Steve McQueen thing. He's notoriously used to go through his scripts and cut out lines that he could do with a look, and we kind of try to do as much of that as we can. It's like why do we have to just blah 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 when we can have a really great look and save, you know, really key lines for the characters. And which it, it cuts our pay, fun. but we're not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> they not, we don't if care they about say them one at all. word. Yeah. <laughs> now, isn't that how it was done, like with old Warner Brothers? Yes. Uh, yes. Where the animators wrote the gags and got paid yes. by the gag, yeah. uh, as opposed to the writers, you know, just the writing of the words running the show, but yeah. the animators. Right. It started at, at, at originally at Disney that way, and Warner mm -hmm. Brothers was that way, where really they, they would come up with a, a basic idea. You know, character wants to cross the road, character wants to stop other character from crossing the road, go. And, uh, and yeah, it was just, you know, the animators had seven minutes to fill of, of fun gags and, and make that into a story arc. And we do the same thing with a slightly more complicated uh, premise. Yeah. And we, we have inter intersecting storylines, which We could makes never it more have fun. sold the show. <laughs> we could never have sold the show if we hadn't pitched it as a storyboard first instead of a script. If we'd given them a script, they would have had no idea who Ferb or Perry were. Because, it, it, because you know, what do you say? Ferb, Ferb looks with the same expression at Phineas uh, that <laughs> at a, as he's been doing. You, you know, it's, it's yes. like the only way for that to work is to have the the, the blank panel where Ferb's just staring at at him, and, and then you, then it reads sort of like Funny. a comic strip. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So so it's uh, it's something we had to do that way in order for it to 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 really even be be sold in the first place. So th this is a show that you would call a storyboard show. Yes, right. storyboard driven. Storyboard driven as opposed to script driven. Well, and then yeah. uh, as the actors, um, we generally only get dialogue scripts. So mm -hmm. whenever like uh, any of us go in to read uh, for the show, we just get much shorter versions without any of the uh, any of the uh, animation. That kind of leaves us. Like, have yeah. no idea what's going on sometimes. <laughs> we'll get, we'll, like, I, I still just remember, be the lines they have to read with no yeah. description of what's happening. I remember reading the Chronicles the of Meep and having no idea what was happening <laughs> yes. because without any, like, any direction at all, you just get these lines where you're talking to Meep. <laughs> and and you're, you're like, what is this creature I'm talking to? Yeah. Yeah. There's and not then, even any of the spaceship crash lands in the backyard. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're just speaking to an alien. Yeah, you there is there's no <laughs> direction letting you know a spaceship What's going crashed. On? Yeah. What is the subtext of me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is my motivation as Phineas today? Yeah. <laughs> now, you're about to do your, the uh, Disney Channel original movie. Is, yeah. uh, you know, that kind Woo! of is the signal that you've arrived uh, in a, a lot of ways. Um, there, there's a lot of really cool things that have been the, the signal that we, that, that things, things are going well for the yeah. show. Uh, we, uh, you know, like, the, the, you know, we keep hitting these milestones that we thought, you know, thought would never happen, like, you know, and they're happening much quicker than we, than we thought they ever could. And, you know, we have walk around characters, the, the, you know, you can go, go to the parks and actually meet Phineas and Ferb and Agent P and, and, uh, and we, you know, we had Wayne Newton singing the, the, the Phineas, the, wow. the Perry the Platypus yes, sound, like soundtrack. Like Platypus Showgirls. Well, yes, Platypus, Platypus, yeah. Platypus yeah. Showgirls. And, uh, Agent P hats and everything. I said Dark and Dangerous Minds. Yes, <laughs> it was, uh, and it, we, just, uh, we just wrote a song for this movie with, uh, with Slash from Guns N' Roses. Right. Which was, uh, which was all sorts of fun. Uh, he's, he, he has kids about the right age, and he's also a big fan of cartoons. He draws himself. Huh. And, uh, and his people contacted the people 
people said, hey, you know, Slash is a huge fan of Phineas and Ferber. Is there anything we could do? And so they came and said, do you guys want to write a, a song with Slash? And no. I mean, I was like, is, is, is this a trick question? <laughs> and uh, and we, you know, we worked with him for like three or four days on writing the song and then recording the song. And, and, uh, uh, and he, he, you know, he was Slash. But he always had his hair back, you know, and, and, and you know, like just in a ponytail and a baseball, baseball cap. cap on. And he didn't look like Slash, like we remember Slash. And then we shot, uh, shot a little bit for the video. The video starts in live action and then becomes a animated. And he came with the glasses and the hat. And suddenly he was Slash. He was like the, the icon. And, and Phineas, uh, Vincent didn't get to meet him till, uh, yeah. till, uh, till, till, till that video. And he, so he met him in the, in the hat and everything. And That's I said, how I was Slash. introduced to uh, the rock god that he was. Yeah, so yeah. I said, like Slash, you, uh, I, I want, there's somebody I want you to meet. This is, uh, this is Vincent, he does the voice of Phineas. And, and Slash said, oh, dude, dude, I, 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 you know, really great work. I, I gotta, I gotta say, I'm kind of starstruck. And, 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 That's not a joke. Vincent, I tell everyone this. Yeah. And Vincent, I've never seen Vincent blush in my life. And Vincent was like, "Well, I, I just, I, I, I guarantee that I am the one who is more starstruck in this particular case." And, and I was like, "You're gonna live off that for a long time." And believe aren't me, you? I will. I will note that. No, he, yes. he called me at at. 12.30 at night? Dude, he's yes. calling you now? No, no, I no, 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 Dan, Dan did. And Dan oh, called me, he goes, no. hey, um, do you want to sing a song with Slash? I said, I'm sorry? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I just got finished writing a song with Slash, and you've got to sing it. And, uh, yeah. and there was a, a silence because I passed out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hello? Hello? I, 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 I guess I lost him. Yeah. <laughs> so. How did you, so the show is very um, structured, two 11-minute uh, stories that yeah. intersect. How did that um, affect your thinking for the movie? Um, it's we, we needed to have the same idea of things happen. I mean, we kind of rely on all these stories crossing each other, but uh, the movie was had so much more scope and, and room to play. Yeah, it becomes, it Is sort it of hour? starts off as like a Phineas and Ferb episode, yeah. and then by the middle of it becomes this big, exciting action adventure comedy. Uh, you know, like a, with really epic scope. At, 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 uh, at one point, there's like this huge climactic battle with robots and and and, and, uh, and stuff that you're not expecting from a Phineas and Ferb episode. Huh. And but we also wanted it to be something more emotional because Phineas and Ferb, especially Phineas, is so positive 100% of the time. He, he, we don't get much of an arc out of out of him. We we, we explained to the writers that that what Phineas and Ferb are doing is not really the story because they're not being changed by it or, ch or growing as characters because they're just always, you know, th these super positive people. They're the it's Ferris really, Bueller's yeah, it's of the episode. What Phineas and Ferb are doing is the, is, the, <laughs> is the setting and what Candace is doing is often the story, you know. Right. And, but in this, we wanted what Phineas and Ferb were doing to be the story. And, and so, you know, Phineas finds out that Perry is a secret agent, which and, and which this is, rattles yeah. his world. Somebody who's shocked. his pet, yeah. in essence, has been lying to him. Is that when you get angry? Yes. yes. Well, yeah. He gets a little pee. It's it, it was it was interesting recording the movie actually when I when I read the script because it was a very lengthy script because it's not a normal sized episode since it's a it's a Disney Channel original movie and uh, and yeah they were just directing me as which didn't even seem like Phineas at that point because Phineas is always so positive and happy and. Oh my gosh! What are we gonna do today? And they were telling me, you know, you're heartbroken. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one other time that I, I got close to being upset, and that was in the the summer belongs to you episode, yeah. where we <laughs> we have a great dig at, at SpongeBob. Where I'm, <laughs> I'm dig I'm digging through the sand, and Isabella's trying to get me to to calm down. I'm like, we could get off this island if we could just. A sponge and a starfish? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and I throw a, you know, a, a, yeah, the pink starfish and the, and the yellow sponge behind me. And that's the closest I've ever gotten to being upset while, uh, while smashing the competition. Um, <laughs> and so this was, yeah, this was very different. And it was, it was cool. I, I really liked how it turned out. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I have a couple of geeky questions. Uh, Malik, does your character have a last name? Um, I believe he does. We, we, we ended <laughs> up with the uh, Patel, I think. Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. For a while there, there was all of these, all of these different... Um, yeah, it, well, it went, a, went astray because we'd originally picked a name that a writer then used as the name of his friends visiting. Right. So we had to go back and say, okay, now that doesn't work. And <laughs> there's been so many debates. Okay. Yeah. Patel. 
Could tell. Okay. Yeah. That's, the, that's the name of the first evil boyfriend in Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Really? I'm a geek too. See, I can that's talk geek. Go. That's <laughs> random. <laughs> nice geek. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Isabella, you know, she Last has a- name? Oh, okay. No, 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 she has a crush. She does. Um, she does? But it, but On Bell Sheet. But <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, oh, wishes. No, that's the next season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do you have experience uh, in that department? Wait, time. So they get to talk about the show. <laughs> 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 totally. Uh, you were probing into their personal lives. Um, yes. I, now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I must be cherry red right now. Um, sorry, rephrase the question. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from there. What, Meaning, don't ask a, that here's question. Here's another one. What, yeah. would, what would you like your character to do? Oh, okay, I can answer that. Um, whatever the writers do, because, and that's not me sucking up, but um, there's a level of spontaneity, but they're also at an age where, you know, does it have to be something that is so concrete and um, perfectly lived out by the characters? I think the funness is in how it's been how long, and they still, I mean, you're pretty oblivious most of the time. <laughs> to what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, I, I don't know, I, what would you like to see happen? You're kind of the one who I'm, tr I'm trying to get your attention. Um, well, I think, I think that's part of the charm uh, that makes it so adorable, is that, is that Phineas is just so innocent that even, even in the Meep episodes, um, where he, uh, he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice Meep. Uh, um, uh, that was adorable, by the way. Um, Aww. no, it, uh, he, he, he has a cute meter that he keeps saying something is, 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 causing interference on the cute meter. And Isabella's like, I think I might know what that is. <laughs> and at the very end of the episode, she's like, it was me, okay? And I was like, Isabella, I took into account your cuteness right when I made it. <laughs> and you know, I, I recognize, you know, that there is something but there, it's so but pure. it's it's just so innocent and so honest. And that's what I think makes the entire storyline work so well between the two of them is that it's just so honest. But yeah. my, my favorite part for Isabella was when we did the City of Love song. Oh, oh that was great. Uh, that was great. Why? Truly. What? It's heartbreaking to me. Uh, you, you know, like we, so we wrote that song and we loved that song, uh, but uh, but when she, but it, it was just like it was me singing it in the in the in the demo and then and then which knocked some it, of the cute right yeah, out yeah it really did <laughs> and, you know I, I, and and when we actually had her come in and record the song it and it actually made me cry I, you know I was listening to it and I was like oh my gosh my heart is breaking for her it was it was so it, it, and it's one of my favorite of your performances uh, yeah it is Thanks. truly thank great. you I was fishing for a compliment thank you. Yes. <laughs> And Malik, what about your character? Um, so I think what's so, it, you mean in terms of like unrequited love or? No, like, like, <laughs> <laughs> anything. No, what, what you'd like him to see him do or? Uh, well, I think what's so cool about his, like what's going on with him is that he's, you know, he's come to America. Like, he's, he's obsessed with, you know, math and getting good grades, but I feel like through his friendship with Phineas and Ferb, he's learning that there's like so much more Mm -hmm. To life, and I think I, you know, I just want to keep going in that direction. There's, there's episodes. I don't, I never know what's aired from what's, what we've recorded. Yeah. Neither do we. So, <laughs> but you know, like Baljeet is going to participate in the Tour de France, and and um, <laughs> so he, he's that like. That episode's not out, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> big reveal. Um, so I just love that he's like, you know, that that he's becoming like so much more three dimensional. You know, as a as a as a as this little kid, he's like art. You know, as a seven year old, he's already expanding his horizons uh, uh, to places that he never would have imagined he would have gone to. So I, that's I just want to keep going with that because I think it's cool to see him outside of his comfort zone, like when he has to sing, you know, give me a grade with the Balgeetles and um, <laughs> right, and, and it's like it's it's taking his character to like a place that. that He's, it's like completely out of his comfort zone, and, and you see like revealing things about him when he does that. We, we've had some great stuff happen with Baljeet that, you know, again, it, it, it's got the potential to be such a one dimensional character, and then the writers will throw in stuff that he says that really make you go, oh, that's really cool. Like, with this, so we've got one writer who's just started writing him as very entitled. 
and kind of attitudinal, like, yes. <laughs> dude, I know what I'm talking about. I am sharp. Yes. And when, it, when he comes out with that, you think, it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's we'll definitely got a snarky side to him. Will other characters uh, appear, or, or do you, have you populated Danville? Oh, we, we, we're constantly putting new characters in. It's, it, it's sort of a matter of, I mean, there's characters that just end up showing back up because we liked the character the first time. They, you know, like, Carl was never supposed to be part of the, uh, of the show. Uh, one of our writers just started having Monogram look off screen and, and talk to this intern that was working the, the, the video. Imagine machine. there had to be a guy working the camera and the yeah. buttons, so he gave him a name. And he's like, Carl, the, uh, the 3,000 still on the screen? Can you get rid of like, it? Like, you know, get it, please. And Thank you. I yeah. love the one about the, the brown recluse spider. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And and uh, and then the next uh, the the next writer that was doing the next show, put Carl into into a show. I think he first showed up in the in the Time Machine episode, the first Time yeah. Machine episode. And uh, and then he then they started having this weird relationship, and we realized that that he's not getting paid. He's an unpaid intern. <laughs> you know. And uh, I he think he had that, to earn that position too. Yes. He yes. He exactly. started as an unpaid intern. Yes. That's what that, the line in there is. Keep up the good work, Carl, and one day you'll make unpaid intern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and what Carl was says, he before? <laughs> he was actually having to pay to work there? I don't know. It's a great time. In the background, Carl says, and I did, because it's in a flashback, and then, and, and then Monogram says, don't get cocky, Carl. <laughs> We have, we have a line in the Carl song where it's like, he knows how to, to format, spell check, and text edit. He's working this job just for college credit. He's <laughs> Carl. <laughs> very fun. Um, we had, uh, when I did that story a few months ago, we, you had talked about a possible Fireside Girls spinoff. We're, so we're still, we're, we're so busy <laughs> writing the ass. <laughs> I'm trying to get your payouts. I think it's a great idea. Well, not to, not to, <laughs> not to play, but I mean, they are a massively fun group to play around with. I mean, from the very beginning when we had the Fireside Girls be the pit crew. <laughs> it's so great. I, they, I think the, the line was, all right, girls, what we're, what we're dealing with here is a 427 cubic inch V8. V8, fully loaded. <laughs> That's all I remember. It was it just, <laughs> and, and having that voice say those lines and being that yeah. in charge, it's like in the, in the, in the movie. Uh, she's the, a leader of, of the Firestorm Girls, which is a division of the Resistance. And she's this hard-bitten, beret-wearing freedom fighter. And it's so cool to see her in that position. Um, you just think, I'd love to play more with, with the whole Fireside Girl dynamic with Isabella. So, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I love what, you know, like, because what Disney wanted out of Isabella was they wanted a cute girl who would, who would be, uh, in, you know, like have a crush on Phineas. And... Uh, and, and we, we, we wanted her to be that and fill that role, but we also wanted her to be very capable in her own, in, in her own way. And so she's sort of the Phineas for her group. Mm -hmm. You know, she's the leader of the, of, of the Fireside Girls, and she, and she, and she is just as, as full of chutzpah as, as, as Phineas is. And, uh, and I think that's what's really made her sort of pop for, for, for young girls. Uh, you know, they, they, they all love Isabella. In her square head. Okay. Yes. We, this way, we, we love the episode <laughs> where, where we, we did the two sides of the same day, where she and the Fireside Girls go to get the sap. And you realize that on their own, they're just as capable as Phineas and Ferb of doing you know, practically anything. Yeah. And there's this whole side of what she does that we don't see, uh -huh. which was a, a really cool episode. I really like cool. that about the show. It, it's like the kids that are they're, they're kind of the outsiders or the geeks. Uh, uh, they, they, they each kind of have these superpowers, and they're yeah. all really sweet, yeah. nice kids. Am it's I not the just about. Or the geek? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're kind of both. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I take it. That, that's a compliment. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but it's not just about being popular or, or looking good. That right. it, it's, it's being smart. It's about being and, capable. And capable and, and okay. caring as well. And, when uh, each character really has their own their own side story that they explore. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one of my favorite uh, relationships in the show is, is between uh, is between Buford and Balgie. Yes. Because they uh, they aren't really enemies no. in a way because Buford would be totally lost without Balgie to give wedgies to. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's just a really fun thing to go with because even at, at the end of the day you see Buford's a very vulnerable guy 
who just loves this goldfish. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Buford and Baljeet have a song in an upcoming episode called Frenemies. So fun to write. Because <laughs> we're frenemies, we like disliking one another. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with the platypus? You know, the, the, the platypus was, was actually at one point either a capybara or a platypus. Because both of them sound funny, just that there's a name, capybara. But okay. platypus, capybara clearly. Capybara don't really know at all. If, <laughs> Yeah, Two I things. You, we looked up in Wikipedia, platypus, a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal. Of and, action. Of action. Of action. And you've got a song. It's got a duck bill, a beaver tail, and I found out up until just recently, my mother-in-law thought we'd made it up. <laughs> and I remember she suddenly had this, I found out that was a real animal. She's Dutch, <laughs> living in France. I thought you just made it up. The, the scientific community was like that when they were discovered. Yeah. They actually, they made a presentation and they all said, no, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. You're making this up. Yeah. That, that's true. Yeah. And Swampy is making entire sense right now. Yeah. But it was, it was this, uh, this wonderful creature that nobody really knew anything about. So we kind of had the freedom to make things up. And who's going to know except maybe some people in New Zealand or Tasmania. Where it's, where it's from. Yes. So um, wow. anyway, that's let's thank everybody for... for <laughs>